Hello, welcome back. This is the Moat, and we are once again, oops, there we go, uh, on the fruit servers. And today, this is episode uh, five, I think it is, or four, episode four, I guess. Uh, and today, I'm playing around, I'm, I'm recording with shaders, so we'll see how that goes. My machine is not uh, you know, super powerful, but it seems to be doing okay. We're over 40 uh, FPS for right now, so that's all right. So I'm recording with shaders. If you're curious which ones, let's just take a quick look. I forgot actually which one I grabbed. We've got several in here. I'm using the CUDA, uh, CUDA Shaders Lite. Um, so it just does the basics and it seems to be doing all right. Uh, what I want to talk about today, I was going to go on about and talk some more about, um, I was going to talk some more about, oh, uh, MCMMO. So I was going to talk a little bit more about that, but right now it doesn't seem to be operating as I expect. So in order to do that, I'm going to, uh, in order to, to make sure we're, I want to make sure I'm trying to do at least once, one video per week. I want to come over and show you this. This is uh, Fruit Henge. Uh, I built this, so I know this place. Uh, and it uh, show, the signs here show the general dire directions to the geocaches. If you're not familiar with geocaches, um, then what they are, they're, they're boxes in the real world that uh, you can go find. People post the uh, latitude and longitude of the boxes. And then people go out and find them and there's little trinkets and stuff and you sign a logbook. And um, you know, it's just kind of a fun way to get out there and explore the world and also learn about latitude and longitude and things like that. So uh, my family and I, we do that on occasion here and we've had a lot of fun. We went ahead and decided to go ahead and add that to the fruit servers. So if you want to come here sometime, by the way, this is this is a public warp of, um, should be right here. Uh, one more time, there we go. Warp geocache, right? And that'll bring you right to here and it'll tell you where the geocaches are. There's the this cache over here. It's 10,400 blocks away. You just head out that direction. There's the Oak Circle cache. And we're going to actually go see that one. Uh, it's 2,000 blocks some odd direction that way. Um, and the third cache is cache number two and it's about 5,000 blocks that way. You can start from here and go see each of these caches. They give you the coordinates. Now, like here, the Y coordinate is missing. So it doesn't tell you exactly where to go, but it tells you the, the general area. Uh, and there's more information as you get a little closer. These two are obvious once you get there. Uh, and then this one, yeah, this one's very obvious once you get there. I'll tell you now, cache number two, the Y, uh, it's a little, you, you don't have to dig to get there, but uh, it's not as obvious. So that one's a little bit better hidden. Now over here is the rules, yes. Remember, you do not need to break any blocks to get to any of the caches. So you don't have to dig to get to the caches. They are available from uh, you know, either the surface or you know, through some water or whatever the case might be. If you have any questions for these, go ahead and mail me. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to the one closest to my place. Uh, it's actually not far away. Uh, and it's the Oak Circle Cache. We'll take a look at that. But it's negative 144, negative 3270. All right, so we're going to take a quick pause and I'm going to head over and I'm actually going to go there from my house just because it's a little easier and it's not too far away. Somebody's building something over here. Cool. Got some kind of ramp going on. I'll come back and take a look. Um, but we're going to go take a look at negative 144, 3270. So we'll be right back. Take a quick pause. And we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. I'm up here at the top of my little tower. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to, there's a, a cache I created not too far from here. Went ahead and at the suggestion of my son who's just joined us, Little Barrow 7, you want to say hi? Hi! Uh, he suggested I try out the Elytra that we have. Uh, I got one in the party crates. And I think it looks really cool with the cape from um, Minecon, I gotta say. Yeah, that, that looks so a little weird, I. but I love it. I love it, it is pretty cool. It looks like you can like spread out an Enderman. <laughs> It just looks so weird, but it looks so cool as well. It is, it is very cool. So the cache, so this is our little house, right? This is our little tower. Uh, and the cache is out that direction. So I'm going to try not to die. So we'll see if I do an epic fail or not. Uh, little Barrow 7 here is is, a, is an expert Elytra flyer. Uh, dad, not so much. But hopefully I won't fall to my death. And if I do, that's okay. But I'll fly out wherever I can, and then we'll run from there, and we'll take a quick look. All right, so... Uh, yeah, well, kind of ran to the wall, but <laughs> oh, and then wow, I forget you take a couple steps off, so I fall off that. Well, not terrible, not great, but not terrible. All right, that was what, yeah, yeah, laugh it up, thanks. Uh, you can see. 
Oh, yeah, it's a good thing your dad has tough skin. All right. Oh, hello. Ah! Well, thank you for. I right, done, buddy. No, don't. And blow up. He blow might. Up now. Yep, there he is. All right. Well, that's all right. Okay. So, oh, hello. This one maybe. Blow up. Whoa. Oh! Did you see him just spin? That was pretty funny. Yeah, I just saw him spin. And oh, poor guy. He died from fire. All right. So I we just came up from there. Yeah. Right. Gotta get my bearings again here. Right, so, wait, where are we going? <laughs> we come up from here. Hey. I tell ya. Yes, we came uh, up from that way. Yeah, we came up from that way, right. So that's not what I want to do. This is the way I want to go. Oops. Ah. And it's out this way. See, now I've got myself turned around. That's great. <laughs> there we go. All right, so uh, if you remember the um, coordinates, and unfortunately I didn't, didn't write them down right now, but let me... Go ahead and put them up there so, so you can kind of show them up there. So I'm at negative 128, it was negative 174, and it's at, there you are, uh, it's at, uh, the, the, the cache itself is at negative 170 something, and that, remember something else creeping up on me, seriously, creep it up. Guys, I'm trying to record. Have you no manners? My goodness. Jeez, well. Louie. All right. Third try. Let me zoom in. He goes trying to get me. All right, that looks like I'm okay for a minute. All right, so it's at negative 174, I think it was, and then at negative three, um, uh, 3270 something, as I recall. All right, so now if you've not played with this before, let's just go real quick. I'm going to line up myself here. As I move, you'll notice that those numbers change. And specifically, one of them is going 3271, 3273. So as I go this direction, heading north, towards negative Z, that number keeps going down. All right, so if I want to move them, it even tells me towards negative D, Z right there. If I want to go towards positive Z, I just go the, go backwards. And then the same thing applies if I make a right turn. All right, if I go that direction, I get 127, negative 127, 130, 131. And it even tells me I'm heading west towards negative X. So you can figure out where a cache is, where you want to go if somebody gives you locations, the X, Y, and Z by just moving that number in the direct, correct direction. Now, if you're if you're just starting out with numbers and negative numbers are a little funny to you, it is kind of weird, but if you uh, if you just look, kind of ignore the you know, the negative and just keep moving until you, the number you're moving, you want moves in the direction you want, you'll be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and I happen to know it's right here. So we're gonna go right on down here. It's my little oak grove. And here is the cache. And so we're at uh, negative 144, I thought it was 175. Oh, well. Um, might have been on the other side when I marked it. Uh, this is the little oak grove that is our cache. Uh, you're welcome to some cake there, we have some. And the cache itself is actually right here. You just stepped on it, 144, negative 3270, that's what it was. All right, and there's the cache. So this is something I've created. You do not have to break any blocks to get here. Uh, if you look around, there are some little hidden micro blocks I've been having some fun with. And then once you get here, all you have to do is go ahead and take a look inside the, the chest. If you take out the, the book and quill, then you can sign the book. And it even has some information. I keep hearing things creeping up behind me. Uh, it even has some information about what to do. So it talks about congratulations, finding the Oak Circle Cache. Um, please don't sign. So don't use this button, uh, this, this sign button. Uh, but I do want you to go ahead and put your name in here. It tells you when it was created. You're welcome to take something from the cache, this little create the chest and leave something of greater or equal value. So I found it first, here's another person who found it. Plenty of room for you to go ahead and sign your name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and then once you're done, please do make sure you put, oops, uh, make sure you do go ahead and put the uh, the signature book and quill back, the signature book back. You're welcome to take any of these items. I'm actually gonna leave a few extra things here uh, for the next person coming along. Um, all right, so I just got that off of a of awards a, a reaction check so that's what that is and that's that's it so it's just a chance to explore the world there's in some interesting places and uh, if you want to create uh, a cache you can do that and then publish the the thing just let me know where it is and i'd be happy to add it to our little geocache set uh, and you can make it as interesting or as boring as you want some of them are literally just a little fountain there's nothing even as much as this little grove of trees uh, and then other others get a little bit more convoluted or a little bit more 
difficult to find. Hey, little mouse. All right, so that's it. Kind of a short episode. Can I, can I tell them um, a story for you? Sure, I'm going to start heading back while you tell the story. So go ahead and speak up a little bit. We're okay, a little so um, <clears throat> we, we were out geocaching one day, um, and this was like out far away from where we live, but I, I, I can't remember where it quite was. But, um, this is in the real world, right? Yes, in the real world. And um, and we were trying to find this geocache and we could not see it. We could not find it. We could not find it, like, at all. Like, we checked in flowers, like, we checked in our flower bed, we checked everywhere except under a sign. And then we finally checked <laughs> under the sign, and there it was. Hidden, Magnetic, hidden behind the scene, that yeah, sign, huh? Yeah, magnetically stuck onto the sign, <laughs> like on the bottom. That's right. And it was like so weird. It was really difficult to find. I know. It was so weird. And, and I'll tell you, cache number two is kind of like that. It, it's not hidden behind a sign, so it's not that way. But it is, um, you know, not in the obvious place. So you do have to look around a little bit once you find that X and Y coordinates. Uh, I will show it to you after we're done here. I don't want to give it away to everybody else. Uh, you've actually been there, I think, so. Um, yeah. Let me put those back up before I forget them and walk off and end up dying with them. Uh, all right, there we go. Um, so I, I think that's. Do. I'm sorry? I really hope you don't. Well, I'm going to try not to. It happens. It's just accents when they do. Uh, yeah. But we're going to go ahead and wrap this up then, guys. Um, and what I'm going to do is put it the. Uh, the I should have done this earlier, but I, I kind of forgot. We'll go ahead and, and I want to show you before we end. I'm going to break over, switch over, and show you uh, Chichibu's and Chip King's build so far, their, their homestead. Their, uh, Chichibu said he had just started up a few days before I did the recording of, of what I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, and they built some pretty cool stuff, including like a little sea serpent and all that. So we'll include that in the video. Uh, and then we'll wrap things up. Right, so we're over here, we're gonna do, this is the second uh, preview on, on fruit, ser fruit servers. A uh, player named Chichibu and Chip King. Um, Chichibu said, and I apologize if I have your name wrong, but there's, there he is right there. Um, is uh, they're they're building. Um, sorry, Chichibu just said he's just been on the server for a few days, and they've already been started building all the stuff. I, I love that little sea monster dragon down there, uh, and his friend Chip King. I don't know, maybe Chip King's been been on longer, but. Um, they've already built up all this. That looks beautiful over there. We'll take a look at that as well. Um, got some kind of a house going on up there. Got this little, got some balconies. Um, little dock down there. Not sure if that's theirs as well. Uh, you know, got their own little, yeah, they've got their, uh, what do you call it? Cactus farm. Automated cactus farm going right there. It's a beautiful little location. It's really gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to drop down into here. Love the use of, of the of all the um, leaves. That's a great little sea serpent. That's really cool. Uh, got a little. Looks like that's the entry to their mine. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait. Okay. So I'm in. I can't jump up from there. That's pretty funny. Uh, so. By that. Oh, so it's. There we go. A little. Oh, okay. I could have come in from here. Anyway. So, we got a little place over here, but that's probably their mine. Very cool. And there's that monster. Alright. I'm going to take a quick look at this. I just wanted to show this off uh, as part of the builds here. Just a drop down there. Uh, some of the builds that go on here, so it's just a little little piece to show some of the creativity that's going on on the server. Lots of amazing people building. Holy Christmas! <laughs> that's a bit of wheat. Uh, lots of people building all kinds of good stuff here. Lots of nice use of different. Holy Christmas! Look at this place. All right, this is beautiful. Uh, love the the lots of different blocks usage here, and sort of this floating. Upstairs. So lots of places for them to be able to store their stuff. And this whole floating block kind of thing is pretty cool. Look at that. 
Very cool. Good stuff. And the, the location down here, I do love this little old, you know, the dark forest, catching the edge of the dark forest and all that. So a very nice little build. I like how they've integrated it into the environment. Um, so that's a look up there in a second. Um, so you're going to build some new platforms up there. So just a, a cool build. Wanted to take a moment to show it to you. Let's go up here. Oh, good. They're pens. You know, good stuff. And oh, okay, so it does come out over here. So I don't know if this is part of their build or not. Okay. Uh, so you just want to see how bad at parkour I am. Oh, <laughs> there you go. All right, excellent. Very cool. Very cool. Looks really good. Uh, all right, so I think that's uh, that's a quick look at what they're doing here. You can see some of that. We'll go over maybe sometime and see that house, but it looks like they're just still working on it right now. And. Um, Kind of cool thing to see. Yeah. All right, so there's your uh, player build of the day kind of piece of the video. All right, guys, so there you are. Um, showed you the some some of their builds, some pretty cool stuff they've got. Those glass buildings are kind of fascinating. And I, we're going to go out, call this for we're going to wrap this episode up. Uh, yeah. As soon as MCMMO is working again the way I expect it to, we'll go on. We'll talk about excavation. We'll talk about uh, some of the things you can do with the herbalism um, skill some cool stuff that you can do with that. Uh, and we'll just kind of, and we'll show you hopefully uh, coming up soon, Blue's uh, Creative World. And she, uh, he, uh, he's done a great job really making it look very cool. He's done some beautiful builds. And so we'll do that. That's actually why I tried out the shaders this time is to see if maybe I can get them enough running well enough and to record well enough to be able to use shaders when I go out to Blue's place. Cause I think that'll be worthwhile. All right, guys. So here's my, my son, Little Barrow 7, and Hi. myself, and we're going to say goodbye for now. Bye-bye. And guys, hope you all are well, and we will catch you on the flip side. Bye.